Welcome back to our ongoing series, Let's Learn How to Use the Lens Meter. Today is kit number six, when we answer the age-old question, is it vertical in balance or is it prism? Go ahead and dig around in your kit until you find bag number six. And when you do take out your frame, it is a mounted pair of single vision plus lenses and make sure you've got the etched number six on there to be sure that you've got the right frame in the right bag. Let's start just as we have been doing with our job order form turn to lens meter kit six. And we're gonna go ahead and look at our right lens, right lens. And as always, I'm gonna aim for the middle. I can turn my lens meter on. I can rotate my power drum to plus 250. I can rotate my axis wheel around to 165. And really important on this one, it's always important, but I do want you to double check that your PCD or prism compensation device is at zero and at 90, everything's well lined up. Then I can start doing my lens meter waltz here and get my sphere lines in perfect focus, my chrome knurled sleeve, get everything lined up. Can rotate my power drum away from me, 75 or 0.75, I end up at 175. <laughs> I've got good cylinder lines. Okay, everything looks wonderful there. Go ahead and mark that one. And before we move to the left, you're gonna recall that I've been saying all along, and we don't move the spectacle table. Here's why. I've been tossing the word verification around for six lessons. What is it exactly that we're verifying? Well, one of the things we're verifying is that the person who made the glasses quite literally laid the lenses out so that they could be cut to fit an individual frame, laid them out in such a way that the lens OC, or in the case of a progressive a fitting cross, aligns properly with the person who's wearing the glasses. In other words, if my person the wearing them, their eye is here, that my OC ends up in front of their pupil or in front of their visual axes. And they do that with using the boxing system and the grid and the blocker. That part's not really what we're worried about here. In a single vision lens, unless an OC height is specified on the job order form, all layout work assumes that you're going to place the lens OC at half of the B. This way, we're going to decenter for the patient's pupillary distance, or PD, but unless an OC height is specified, finishing work, blocking, is always done at half the B. So you can see why it's important that if my right lens OC is supposed to be at half my B, that my left lens OC also be placed at half the B. That's why we don't move the spectacle table when we move from our right to our left lens. If one of them was blocked here and due to an error, one of them was blocked here or here, that is vertical in balance. And that's what I'm gonna show you in just a minute when we go back to the lens meter. Vertical imbalance is not a good thing. Now, if you have PRISM requested in a prescription like this, and your right has none, and your left has one and a half up, and you look in the lens meter when you move to your left, and you've got your OC displaced one and a half up in those reticle rings, hey, great, then you're spot on. You got what you need. You got the amount of PRISM that there is called for. But 99% of the time, you don't want that. You want the OCs to be on the same plane. In a progressive lens, you're going to use your fitting cross as a reference point. And for line bifocals, if you have a segment in here, 
the OC is generally ground behind it and it is accounted for for distance PD and an OC height if it's called for. If it's not, then they do it usually five millimeters above the segment height. So that is what we're verifying. That's where the vertical imbalance concept comes from. That's why we do not move the spectacle table between our right and our left lenses. Let's head back to the lens meter and take a look at what that looks like. Let's go ahead and move from our right to our left, obviously without moving the spectacle table. And we can set our power drum to 50, my axis wheel at 153, and I'm centered this way. Go ahead and take a look inside the lens meter. What you see should be very close to what you see on screen. And that is vertical imbalance. And that is what I want you to get out of kit number six. I want you to be able to recognize a problem when you see it. This is not about step-by-step -step verification. This is not about Prentice's formula. This is not about applying standards. This is just about learning how to use the lens meter. What would you do if you're faced with this? The answer might surprise you. You would send the job back to the lab the glasses were made wrong. You're gonna have all kinds of questions on tests about Prentice's formula and standards and applying standards and verification, and they're gonna make a big deal of it in your practical exams. There are gonna be 20 questions about it on your ABO. You know what? A pair of glasses that is made wrong gets sent back to the lab to be made right. You're not gonna go around calculating your powers and oblique meridians formula for the power at 90. Work in Prentice's formula to decide whether it cancels or it compounds and whether somebody could wear these glasses. No, they were made wrong. Single vision, you have vertical imbalance, send them back to the lab. Straight top, line bifocals, lined multifocals, vertical imbalance, send it back to the lab. Progressive lenses have vertical imbalance as part of their design. So don't be in a big rush to return those. Uh, again, it's, this isn't the time or place to get into it, but if you have a lot of vertical imbalance in a progressive, raise the lens up to the prism reference point, and it should be equal in both. Uh, it may be severe, and it may be both up, up, down, down, whatever it might be, but don't reject a progressive lens just because you have vertical imbalance. You might want to check with the lab, make sure that everything is okay on their end and it makes sense before you go sending them back and delaying, especially a progressive or a surface job, which would run into you know, a couple of days. That's really what I wanted to convey with you on for lens meter kit six. Keeping in mind, if your job order form does not have prism requested and you have it, the job was made wrong. If your prism value shows one and a half up and you're verifying this, and sure enough, you have one and a half up, then you're good to go. Lens meter kit number six. Next time we jump into single vision lenses again and we do some layout work, kind of reinforce what I was just talking about on the whiteboard, I will see you next week.